All right, great question that came in from you guys last night uh, regarding my film career. Uh, there's been a lot of great questions, by the way. And again, thank you guys so much for being engaged um, week in and week out uh, with all these questions. It's so cool to stay connected to you guys. A lot of questions about my wrestling career, my movie career, a lot of questions about relationships, a lot of questions about tequila, a lot of questions about mental health, wellness, uh, all of which I will certainly get to. So the question I saw last night was a really cool one. It made me think. The question was, was there ever a role in Hollywood that I wanted so badly and I went after and I didn't get it and it went to another actor? That answer is yes. And that role is Jack Reacher. And of course it went to Tom Cruise. Now, the B side of my answer is that the truth is, you know, in Hollywood, um, actors are kind of like in a box and the roles that are written, there's a lot of actors that can vie for a particular role because it calls for them to have a certain look, skin color, size, um, et cetera. Fortunately for me, uh, there's not a lot of guys in Hollywood at all <laughs> who look like me. So all of my roles from the beginning of my career, um, I've been a lucky son of a bitch that they have all have been created and designed uh, specifically for me, except Jack Reacher. So I had, now this was over 10 years ago and I was in a much different place. I recognize that, a much different place in my career. Tom was obviously um, the biggest movie star in the world um, and I was not. So I wanted that role so badly because I was a big fan of that character and I thought I could do him justice. He was my height, 6'4", 6'5", um, 275, 280 pounds um, and he was a bad dude. So I got the call uh, saying, hey look, you know, you didn't get the role. Now look, the truth is I don't even know if I had a shot for it, but um, the people around me at that time made me think that I did, and I felt like I did. I felt like, why not me? Um, but anyway, it went to Tom, no hard feelings, of course. But the interesting thing about that, and it's just funny how the universe works sometimes, is that when I didn't get that role, I got a call from Universal Studios saying, hey, we have this idea about you joining the Fast and Furious franchise. And they, and they were quick to say, we know it's late in the game and they were just getting ready to shoot like in about three weeks or something like that or a month, I can't remember. Um, and they said, there's not a lot of money for the role, um, but it is a good opportunity. So I said, well, I've been a fan of the franchise and what you guys have been doing. Um, and especially I see the potential in this and this was for Fast Five. And um, I said two things, just give me the creative freedom and space to create the character that I want to create um, and let me create a little team around me um, and don't worry about the money. I said, um, I'm doing all right right now, uh, I'm not starving. I said, but you know, in success and if, if I create a character that people are going to like and that could kind of hit the zeitgeist of culture in a cool way, then the money's going to be there. Uh, and they said, absolutely deal shook hands and uh, put a team around me of the Fast Five writer, Chris Morgan, who has written Fast Five, Six, Seven, Eight. He did not write Fast Nine and he wrote Hobbs and Shaw. And the other part of that equation was our Seven Bucks uh, president, who I've known since I was 18 years old, Hiram Garcia. So the three of us in this trifecta nucleus created this character of Hobbs. And, you know, I always look back on that time because I was so disappointed that I didn't get Jack Reacher. But also looking back, um, I'm actually, I'm positive that the, the role of Jack Reacher, because it was an established property and IP and character, well known and beloved all around the world, I wouldn't have had the creative space to do what I wanted to do with the character. So with Hobbs, we created this character from scratch and I wanted to create the baddest walking, shit talking, um, the jabroni beating, pie eating, trailblazing, <laughs> eyebrow raising kicking ass uh, character of the of uh, I was gonna say the rock of Hobbs but you could see there's so many qualities in Hobbs uh, that are really just an extension of me and I feel like I and and by the way so now looking back I had that creative space and freedom and we created a character that audiences you guys around the world just completely fell in love with and I'm so grateful for that and what we have realized over time with the character of Hobbs with all the crazy um, uh, antics and, you know, there's like gravity defying things that Hobbs does. I mean, you know, he's the guy who broke a cast off his arm 
was like, Daddy's got to go to work. He's the guy who <laughs> redirected a torpedo uh, in Fast 8. And, of course, in Hobbs and Shaw, he's the guy who was, like, holding a helicopter with one arm and a chain and holding on to the back of the rig. Um, but I found that if we create, if we can create a character that was consistently winking at the audience and just letting the audience know in Fast 5, 6, 7, 8, and Hobbs and Shaw, when we created the spinoff, letting the audience know, winking, that I'm having the time of my life. Hobbs is having so much fun. Doesn't He doesn't always have the answers, but he's going to act like he does. You're goddamn right I do. <laughs> um, but always having fun. And it's that winking um, entertainment value and quality that Hobbs is able to bring that allows the fans to accept and embrace like, hell yeah, Hobbs can hold the helicopter. Hell yeah, he can lasso the moon. Hell yeah, he could do all these things, you know, that kind of thing. So I look back um, with gratitude that I did not get um, Jack Reacher uh, because, you know, when one door closes sometimes in life um, in a kind of cool way, the universe will open up another door and that other door was Hobbs and Shaw. One more thing regarding Hobbs and the universe that we're creating is a lot of you guys were super excited a few weeks ago when I made the, uh, that I, when I said that uh, we are developing the sequel to Hobbs and Shaw, which we are. Chris Morgan, of course, will write again. Seven Bucks Productions will produce again. And, you know, we created a lot of great characters uh, from Vanessa Kirby uh, character to Idris Elba, um, Isaac Gonzalez, and now in